If you're looking for the best laptop for 3D modeling and architecture, then you found the right video, and I must say this is the perfect time to be looking for a new laptop. All the 2024 models will be coming out in the next couple of weeks here or months, and the 2023 models will be going on sale. And let me tell you, what I've seen so far coming out is that the 2024 models are not that much powerful than the 2023 models. So in my opinion, snagging a great deal on the 2023s as the 2024s are coming out is the way to go. Now in this video, we're gonna talk through the specs. I'm gonna work you from budget all the way up to high-end 3D modeling and architecture laptop so that you can find the right laptop for your needs. We're even gonna talk about specific apps that need special thoughts such as SolidWorks and Revit when you're choosing your laptop. Now first and foremost, let's talk about the HP Omen and the HP Victus. Now the HP Omen did have a nice little redesign in 2023. It got a little bit thinner, a little bit lighter, and I really enjoy the chassis design a bit more. It actually got a ledge this year instead of the previous generation, the HP Victus, looking very similar to the HP Omen from 2022, 2021. So the HP Victus did not get a redesign as far as the actual complete chassis. It didn't get thinner or lighter. However, it did have a little bit of a low key redesign from 2022 to 2023. And that is that they rounded off the edges on the top cover and the bottom cover. So it's a lot smoother. It isn't so sharp. It's actually less sharp than the HP Omen. So I like the design of both the Victus and the Omen, especially for the Victus. If you're looking for a great budget-friendly laptop, a lot of people ask me, hey, do you like the Acer Nitro or do you like the Lenovo Lock? Overall, I think the Victus out of those three laptops has the little bit more premium vibes to it. It has a nicer bottom cover material it's a really great laptop as far as budget friendly is concerned. Then the HP Omen is of course the step up from there. You can get both of these laptops in a variety of SKUs, 40, 50, upwards of 40, 70. You can get them in Ryzen and in Intel. So whatever you really want to go for, you have options. Now, as far as I'm concerned, let's jump into GPUs right off the bat. You will want to have at least an RTX 4060 if you're a serious 3D modeling or architecture user. If you are somebody who's dabbling, you can get away with an RTX 4050. It's, it's really doable. However, if you wanna see great performance, I would be at a 4060. If you wanna see amazing performance, I'd be at a 4070 and above. If I were purchasing a 3D modeling for laptop for myself personally, I would go with an RTX 4070. I think it's the best kind of mid-range bang for buck. And if you get it in something like the HP Omen or the Lenovo Legion Pro 5, it's gonna have amazing performance. So best bang for buck I'm gonna say is 4070, low end 4060. And if you wanna get crazy, 4080s and 4090s will only give you better performance. Now, moving on into the next laptop, we have the Asus Tough A16. Now, as you can see, this comes with the Radeon RX 7700S. Now, the reason this one is such a fantastic buy is it's around $1,000. And for SolidWorks, quick brush on this, you wanna have either a workstation GPU or a Radeon GPU. I'll dive more into that during our SolidWorks section, but just keep that in mind, this would be a fantastic SolidWorks or Revit laptop. Now moving on to my favorite thin and light laptop for 3D modeling. This is basically the size of an Ultrabook. It's insane. This is the X13. And this comes with an RTX 4070. Now you're going to pay for it. It's about $24.99 and I've yet to see it on sale for the 2023 model. The 2022 models had some great sales. So if hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll see some sales soon. However, I have heard rumors when I was at CES that this would not be getting a refresh this year. It would be staying at the Ryzen 9 7940HS and RTX 4070. So this one may or may not go on sale. It is a magnesium alloy chassis. You can even hook in a larger GPU to this using the XG mobile connector. So just keep in mind, this may not be one you want to hold your breath on for getting a discount. However, it is a fantastic laptop with great performance for 3D modeling. Now, one of the more budget-friendly options, the Acer Swift X. This comes in an i7-13700H and an RTX 4050. Definitely one I would not highly recommend. But if you're on a budget, you want a you know smaller form factor laptop, it could be a good option for you. But again, it is an RTX 4050 and it is Acer with an RTX 4050, which means it's not gonna be the most optimized laptop. Okay, the Strix Scar G16. Now I do have the G17 before me here. I actually did not get a chance to review the G16 this year, which is rather disappointing. Hopefully I'll get one next year. 
but this is a beast of a laptop. This comes with an RTX 4060 and the i7-13650HX. Now, if you want to get the big boy like I have here, this is the G17. Okay, this comes with an RTX 4090 and a Ryzen 9 7945 HX processor, 64 gigs of RAM. This is a 3D modeling beast. This will definitely give you the punch you're looking for for 3D modeling. But again, it is going to be upwards of like $3,500. So if you're looking for a little bit more budget-friendly option, the Strix Rogue Scar G16 is a great option for you. Now the Asus Republic of Gamer Flow X16 or the G16 from 2023 are great options. They both are gonna come with 4060s up to 4070s. However, for me, I personally prefer the X16. It's just gonna have a better form factor. It's basically the big version of the X13. Um, same magnesium alloy chassis, same two in one flip over screen, same great large trackpad, simplified keyboard. It's, it's a great model. And so for me, I'm personally be looking at the X16 for great performance. Um, keep in mind, you will be able to upgrade the RAM in that one. Um, this is gonna be soldered in the X13, but the X16 is going to be upgradable, which is a great option for you. Now, looking at the MacBook Pro 14 and 16, going from M3 Pro to M3 Max, these are going to be fantastic for Apple Silicon native software. The thing that gets funky is when you go to do any sort of parallels or you go to do like a Windows boot inside of boot camp or whatever, you don't get all of the features coming over from x86. Remember, it is not running on x86. It's running on this new Apple Silicon. And there have been numerous people, uh, my father included, that have team members using Apple devices that cannot run their 3D modeling programs because we now have new Apple Silicon. Remember, it's no longer an Intel processor. So make sure that you know what you're doing when you buy a Mac product. Either verify that you have Apple Silicon native softwares or converse with a expert in the software you are using to make sure that that is compatible if you're using Parallels or using Bootcamp because these laptops are very powerful. They make fantastic 3D modeling or architecture laptops when the softwares are compatible. So do your research for the softwares. There's a list of Apple Silicon native software, which I will pull up on the screen so you can see for now which ones are native. Moving on to the Asus Republic of Gamer Zephyrus G14. Now, 2022 is going to be my favorite year to date. We've yet to see the new model come out, but to date for the Asus Republic of Gamer Zephyrus G14. Now, the reason being is because it came with an RX 6700S GPU, which was probably the best GPU that this laptop has come with in the past three years for 3D modeling. The reason being is that RX 6700S showed incredible performance for Autodesk 3DS Max, Autodesk Maya, PTC Creo, but what was even more amazing was the performance we saw out of this laptop for SolidWorks because it was that Radeon GPU. When we rolled into 2023, they went back to the NVIDIA GPU and the NVIDIA GPU does do well well, the RTX 4070 does do well for Autodesk 3DS Max, Autodesk Maya, and PTC Creo. However, SolidWorks once again took a dive because SolidWorks does not work well with NVIDIA GeForce gaming GPUs. If you are somebody who's going to be using the prior apps, not SolidWorks, I would recommend a 4070 or a 4080 in this laptop. The 4060 was rather underwhelming in 2023 for the GPU. So if you can, find this laptop in a 2022 model with a Ryzen 9 6900HS and RX 6700 or 6800S. They're becoming more and more rare, but to me, they're becoming like a collector's edition of the laptop. Like I, I honestly kind of want to buy one for nostalgia's sake because it was such a great year for the G14. So that's my recommendation for the G14. They will have the latest G14 coming out with the stripe on top. Do note that that will be coming out. The pricing is pretty much on par with 2023 models. Um, but we do have, of course, the latest Ryzen processor, the 8000 series in that laptop. So coming soon, we'll see how it performs. I'll have one in the studio, fingers crossed for great performance. Now looking at budget-friendly models, the Lenovo Lock. This is a laptop that we first saw in 2023 and now the refresh is coming out in 2024. Truly Lenovo's budget-friendly laptop. We have budget-friendly bottom cover. We have budget-friendly top cover. It just feels more budget. 
budget friendly. However, it is Lenovo, and so though it is budget friendly, it does come with all the features like Lenovo Vantage Center, great optimization of the components. I did see great performance out of this laptop. However, again, it is budget, so you're gonna have an RTX 4050. You can upgrade it to a 4060, but in my opinion, if you're going to upgrade the Lenovo Lock, you might as well go ahead and get the Lenovo Legion 5 Pro or, you know, regular 5i. I don't know why you would pay, um, you know, $100, $200 less for truly a less quality from the build material standpoint, not assembly or, you know, components in it, but just the build materials they choose. I don't know why you pay a few hundred dollars less when you can get something so good. Now, if you're on a budget, I totally understand. Um, but if it were me, I would just you know, save the extra money and go for the Lenovo Legion, you know, Pro 5 or 5, especially coming out in 2024. They're having a few new refreshes, bringing back the 5i, and they're keeping the Pro 5i in the lineup. We'll talk about that in just a minute. Now, the next thing I wanna look at, and these are actually on sale right now, I've seen some of these on sale, is the Slim 5, the Lenovo Legion Slim 5. And I've seen them on sale for about the same price as the Lock. The Lock is actually about $809 right now, so it's actually a crazy sale. But this is an all aluminum, thin, light form factor, 16 by 10 aspect ratio. It can come in an OLED panel. So it's very, very color accurate, it can be very bright. And this is one of my favorite laptops from 2023. To me, it overtook the G14 as my favorite 14 inch compact gaming laptop because the G14 for the price showed poor performance at the same SKU level. Okay, actually not even true. This was a 4060 and this was a 4050 in my head-to-head -head review. And the Slim 5 far outperformed for the price, the G14. So if it were me and I'd be looking at a 14 inch 3D modeling laptop this year, I'd go for this in an RTX 4060. Uh, it does come in a 4050, but the 4060 would be even better. Um, you're not gonna be disappointed. Again, all the links for the laptops are in the description below. If you do make a purchase, I will get a commission at no extra cost to you, but of course that keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. All right, the Lenovo Legion Pro 7i. This is going to be the big brother of the 5i, very similar in form factor. However, we're going to be getting into an i9 processor. The 5, luckily, they kept at the i7, so we can have some distinguishing between the 7 and the 5. Now, the only confusing thing is that the Legion Pro 7i comes with an i9 processor and the Legion Pro 5i comes with an i7 processor and the Legion 9i comes with an i9 processor. So maybe we could have redone that a little bit just to kind of align with what Intel's been doing for generations. But anyway, neither here nor there. Uh, both the 5i and the 7i are fantastic laptops for 3D modeling coming in the 4060 all the way up to the 4080 uh, in specific SKUs. So definitely check out the links in the description below. You can configure your own on Lenovo.com. I also forgot to mention, oh my goodness, these are on sale right now. The Slim 5s are on sale. I've seen some for $1,000. Uh, I've seen some for around a $1,200 price point. So definitely check the links in the description below for the live pricing. Grab that Slim 5 on sale. I might buy one just because I like it so much, even though I already have one. That's silly. I'm not gonna do that. All right, the next thing we're gonna be looking at is actually a few 2024 laptops, um, as well as one of my favorite laptops in this entire lineup. So keep your eyes peeled. The MSI Vector 16HX is gonna come with the latest i9-14900HX and an RTX 4060. And like I said, these laptops, these i9 14th generation laptops and i7 14th generation laptops are going to show an improvement of performance. But as always, we usually only see anywhere from a 20 to 30% increase in performance at max between generations. So going from 2023 to 2024, you have tons of performance in 2023 laptops for 3D modeling. I've been amazed at the performance from these laptops, even on the more budget friendly SKUs, something like the HP Victus with an RTX 4060 or, you know, the Lenovo Legion Slim 5 with even an RTX 4050 showing off incredible performance in 3D modeling. If you wanna get more specific info on 80% of the laptops in this video, you can go ahead over to my channel, search for the video and find my review with full 3D modeling benchmarks. If I listed all the 3D modeling benchmarks for every laptop throughout this video, it would be like a two hour video. So to save time, you can head on over to my channel and look at specific laptops and hopefully the one you're interested in, I have a dedicated review for. Okay, so next up will be the Alienware M16 R2. We have the Intel Core Ultra 7155H. 
Now, I'm not fully endorsing this laptop yet. The only reason it's on my lineup is because it does have an RTX 4070. If Intel Core Ultra is as powerful inside of a 3D modeling laptop as say an i7-13700H from last year, then we have great hope for this laptop. But personally, I would not pull the trigger on this laptop yet from my recommendation on this video because I have not personally tested it. And so the reason I have it here is because I know people will ask about the new Intel Core Ultra and I will say it has an RTX 4070. So there's no reason why it wouldn't perform well inside of a 3D modeling or architecture program. However, if Intel Core Ultra does not vibe well with 3D modeling programs, then we could see an issue, which is why I would personally wait to pull the trigger on Intel Core Ultra until maybe you see some of my reviews with those laptops in 3D modeling programs. Okay, the MSI Stealth 16, you have the i7-13620H and the RTX 4070. Great laptop. Going to be seeing this one on sale. So if you want MSI, this has 32 gigs of RAM, one terabyte of SSD. Fantastic. Now, before I pull up the next laptop, which is one of my favorites on the lineup, let's talk about RAM. Something I haven't mentioned much here in the video so far. You want to have at least 16 gigs of RAM. Now, some of these laptops on the lineup do come with eight, but I would recommend upgrading that either post-purchase or in the shopping cart if you're ordering from Lenovo or HP directly where you can make those modifications to the configuration of your laptop from the manufacturer. However, if you can get upward of 32 or 64 gigs of RAM, it will help. But I am not personally seen RAM increase the performance inside of 3D modeling programs from a direct to application standpoint. Now, what I mean by that is if you go ahead and you complete one task in a program, it will go ahead and generate that task in a certain amount of time. However, if you are doing multiple tasks in a program while also running multiple other softwares, you, know, you have your web browser open, you're listening to music, perhaps you're doing some research on YouTube for one of your projects, whatever it might be, you have a notes app open, whatever, right? You're doing multitasking. That is where extra RAM will definitely be important. So if you're a frequent multitasker, I would definitely encourage you to up your RAM as high as your budget would allow so your program does not bottleneck. But personally, I have not seen higher performance while running the singular application that you are using by upgrading the RAM. I would say it'd be more of a multitasking improvement on your workflow. If you're new to RAM, that's random access memory. Every time you open a program, it will pull away from your system's RAM. So let's say you open Google Chrome, that's gonna be anywhere from two to four gigs of RAM. Say you open a program like SolidWorks, that's gonna be anywhere from four to eight gigs of RAM. It could go up a little bit higher from there. And let's say you open Spotify, that's gonna be anywhere from one to two gigs of RAM. So if you have 16 gigs of RAM, you can see you've already used almost all of your RAM. And what your system will do at that point is it will start to bottom like some of the processes to pull down the RAM usage and therefore slow your computer down. So by increasing your RAM, you can increase your multitasking and the lack of bottlenecking from your system in order to run efficiently. So more RAM, definitely better, but I think 16 gigs of RAM is a fantastic benchmark to get you started. All right, next laptop on the lineup is going to be the ProArt StudioBook Pro 16 OLED. This is definitely going to be one of the best 3D modeling laptops from a functionality standpoint. We have the three click buttons on the trackpad. So you can go ahead and click the center button and rotate around objects very easily inside of 3D modeling and architecture programs. You also have the dial where you can program specific functions in 3D modeling softwares in order to boost your efficiency in your workflow. And let me tell you, this is truly a game changer. I've used this while video editing and either scrolling through the timeline or making switches to tools. It is so efficient. And all of that is packed into a laptop with an RTX A3000. So again, it's gonna be a great SolidWorks laptop because it is a workstation certified GPU. Now, if you're going to be somebody who's using 3D modeling softwares, but also using other softwares uh, like video editing or gaming, you might wanna go for the RTX 4080, 40, 4070, 4080 version, um, which would be a great choice for you as well. But if you're doing SolidWorks or Revit, definitely go ahead and grab that RTX A3000 workstation certified quadro gpu from nvidia all aluminum laptop 16 by 10 aspect display absolutely beautiful thin and light all aluminum laptop a great buy for 3d modeling absolutely next would be the razor blade 14 and 16 these laptops they are beautiful they're well built they're a good looking laptop but honestly not really that much better looking than the uh, pro art and you get more performance 
at a less price. Um, but they are a very popular laptop, and especially that we're now coming out with the i9-14900HX. It's, it's a good pick. It's really good. It has good performance. It's sleek. It's beautiful. However, they are quite expensive, uh, especially for the different SKUs that you can get when you get down to the more affordable ones. The parts become more affordable. You know, you start getting down to RTX 4060s and 16 gigs of RAM, and you're sitting at $2,400 to $2,800 for that type of component configuration. And for me, I'd rather get a little bit more performance out of my laptop, sacrifice a little bit of the build quality, being that performance is what gets the job done, not necessarily build quality. Um, because when it comes to the razor blades, they do have aesthetic, um, they are very beautiful, but that build quality doesn't improve the longevity necessarily of the laptop in that specific model, you know, in my opinion. Now, the next thing we're gonna be looking at is the high-end workstations and SolidWorks laptops in this lineup. This is where I bring up the beautiful Lenovo ThinkPad series. That This is the P16, comes with the RTX A1000 all the way up to the A5500. You can configure it in all sorts of ways on Lenovo.com. Again, links for all the laptops are in the description below. And you can pick this up on Amazon.com or you can go ahead and customize it on Lenovo's website specifically. Personally, I'd probably order it off Lenovo so I can get really custom with my pick. You can get this, again, from the i7-13700H all the way up to the i9-13950HX. But keep in mind, there is a vast price point between these different models. Now, looking at the RAM, again, if you're purchasing this on Lenovo, you can take it from 16 gigs all the way up to 64 gigs of RAM. So there's a lot of customization. I love the design on these ThinkPads, um, especially compared to, say, like the HP ZBooks. They're really nice, the ZBooks. They're aluminum. They've got nice build quality, but I love like that carbon feel on some of the models from uh, Lenovo ThinkPad series. I mean, if they're not carbon, they're very like matte finish plastic material. Sometimes they have a magnesium carbon combination. Um, I just feel like they're really great on the go laptops and they have an incredible reputation for being long lasting, durable laptops. Um, I've seen people with you know laptops that are 10 plus years old from the ThinkPad series. I mean, the tech starts to become out of date from the component standpoint, but the laptops are still kicking. So definitely great models from the Lenovo ThinkPad series. Next will be the Dell Precision 5000. The latest model is the 7700. And one thing you'll notice from these 3D modeling laptops with these Quadro series workstation GPUs from NVIDIA is they don't get a lot of refreshes. Um, that's one thing I was really noticing year over year so far of doing this video for over five years now is that it takes a while for the CPU SKUs to get refreshed and even the GPUs. Like you'll see here with this Dell Precision, the most I could find this one in, which I think is a fantastic pick, is the i7-12850HX. It comes with the RTX A3000, fantastic, 32 gigs of RAM, great. Um, but it just slowly gets CPU refreshes. Even something like the MSI WE76, that one has actually been on my lineup for two or three years now, and I have not been able to find that one in an upgraded SKU since 11th gen. So you get the i9-11980HK. However, when you go ahead and you benchmark that laptop, it is on par with some of the recent generations of 12th and now 13th gen. So where we're seeing the biggest bang for buck is going to be in getting that strong GPU. Getting that laptop with the NVIDIA RTX A5000 is a great pick and you can get it up to 128 gigs of RAM. So you have tons of ceiling. Really the thing that comes with 3D modeling is you don't wanna bottleneck your system on any of the components. And let me tell you, the CPU is going to be honestly the last system that bottlenecks. You wanna really focus on the GPU and if you're a big multitasker, having enough RAM to cover all the programs you're running at the same time. Now, new to the lineup for this year is gonna be the Creator Pro X17. That's where we have the i9-13980HX. That's where we have the i9-13980HX. So keep in mind, if you wanna have the latest CPU from 2023, you're gonna to have to go for the Creator Pro X17 instead of the MSI WE76. Next would be the ZBook series. Okay, so these are gonna be your Mac Daddy 3D modeling laptops from HP. We have the A2000 all the way up to the A5000. This is gonna be the A5000 equipped version. Have the Intel Core and Intel Xeon, depending on the configuration you want. Again, I'll link up the HP store as well as some Amazon listings that are available. But one of the best things about this laptop is the ease of upgrade. It is insane how quickly you can access four SSD slots and four RAM slots. So you could have 128 gigs of RAM in this laptop. You could have four different SSDs in this laptop. So you could have terabytes upon terabytes of storage 
in the HP ZBook Fury. Now the HP ZBook Studio is a great pick as well. I love the HP ZBook Studio because it's more of the thin and light version of the HP Fury. Now again, you're not gonna have as much customization. You're not gonna be able to pop the bottom cover off so easily, and you may not be able to get as big of a GPU inside of the studio. However, it is the thin and light version of the Fury, and so great on the go laptop. Fantastic build quality, aluminum. And of course you have a clickable trackpad instead of having the three button click like on the Fury. So definitely a little bit more functionality here in the ZBook Fury compared to the ZBook Studio. You can see we have a numpad versus no numpad on the Studio. It's definitely some different options. However, one thing that's really good about the Studio is as the dream color display. So it's gonna be far more color accurate if that is important to you. Now I listed the Asus Pro Art Studio Book Pro 16 OLED once again on this lineup because I wanted to show you specifically pointing out the RTX A3000. Now SolidWorks, as I promised earlier, is going to be an app that prefers and almost demands either Quadro Workstation NVIDIA GPUs or a Radeon GPU. Now let's go ahead and switch over to the next slide here. Bang for buck SolidWorks laptops. As you can see, these are all laptops with RX GPUs. Again, the reason being is for whatever reason, SolidWorks says, hey, I like these Radeon GPUs. And we see great performance in them substantially over the top of NVIDIA GeForce GPUs. So the problem with going with one of these is it's not a workstation certified GPU. So if you go to SolidWorks and say, hey, I'm having issues with my program, SolidWorks may not give you support. On their website, they actually say they will not give customer support to anything but Quadro certified workstation GPUs. Now you may get lucky and get a support person that's willing to help you problem solve your issue, but they list on their site that they're only gonna support Quadro workstation GPUs. It's a very particular program as far as the components are concerned, and NVIDIA has worked with SolidWorks in order to make that program run well. Now another program that has some issues with the GeForce gaming GPUs, and by issues I mean they just don't perform as well, not like it's gonna fry your GPU or fry the system, um, is going to be Revit. Revit is going to see much better performance out of Quadro, RTX, 8, 1000, 8, 2000, 3000, 4000, 5000, compared to having just like an RTX 4070. So that is the run through when you're looking at SolidWorks or Revit. Radeon GPUs have great performance, but aren't certified. The certified GPUs have great performance, and they're certified. So definitely something to consider when going ahead and looking at a SolidWorks laptop. Now, looking at the best bang for buck though, if you're gonna get a Quadro equipped laptop, it's gonna be far more expensive as you saw from the lineup before. High-end workstations plus SolidWorks laptops, they're all more expensive laptops. But if you're on a budget, any of these laptops here, the Asus Republic of Gamers Zephyrus G14 from 2022 with the RX 6700 or 6800S, the HP Omen, from 2022 with the RX 6650M, the MSI Delta AMD. This one might actually be from 2021, but it comes with the RX 6700M. The Corsair Voyager with the Ryzen 9 6900 HS from 2023, RX 6800M. And then one of my absolute favorites, it is a powerhouse of a laptop, the Lenovo Legion Slim 7 AMD Vantage from 2023, the Lenovo Legion Slim 7 AMD Vantage from 2022, the Ryzen 9 6900HX, and Radeon RX 6800S with 32 gigs of RAM. The first and the last laptop, the Asus Zephyrus G14 from 2022, and the Lenovo Legion Slim AMD Advantage from 2022 are actually pretty hard to find, but if you can, they are fantastic picks. All right, let's keep moving through this video. I know you guys have hung on in here quite a while. So if you've made it this far, go ahead and subscribe. Keep an eye out on the channel for more videos and go ahead and gently massage that like button because whoever decided smashing like buttons was either cool or they liked it was a moron. So go ahead and massage it. Don't smash it. Next, let's look at the 2024 laptops that'll be coming our way in the next couple of months. Some have already hit stores, some are populating on websites, but not quite yet available. Something like the Lenovo Legion 7i, Lenovo Legion Pro 5i. I seen the Pro 5i on bestbuy.com. However, you are not able to order it yet. Something like the Lenovo Yoga Pro 9i. This is looking like it's gonna be a great laptop. It's gonna be a thin and light Lenovo Yoga. However, it's gonna come with an Intel Core Ultra 9 185H 
RTX 4060 up to a 4070. I'm really anticipating this laptop. I think it's going to be a great pick. Now, the MSI Cyborg 14, this is one that's already available. It got a slight refresh as far as the build quality. I was checking out at the MSI booth at CES 2024. Love the build quality. Love the compact form factor. It comes with an i7-13-620H and an RTX 4060. This is one that has last year's components, but got a refresh. So hopefully we'll see this one coming out soon. And I think it'd be a great buy for 3D modeling. Now, looking at the MSI Creator 16 AI, this is one with Intel's Core Ultra 9 185H. Get this one from an RTX 4060 up to a 4090, or even the NVIDIA Quadro RTX A5000. So this would make a fantastic 3D modeling laptop. Coming out this year, 16 gigs of 64 gigs of RAM, one terabyte SSD, a lot to offer. Now, next laptops to come, and laptops are actually available right now. Now, the ones I've seen available right now on the market are the Asus Republic of Gamers Strix Scar 16, saw that on bestbuy.com, the HP Omen Transcend 14 OLED, saw this one at CES, the most exciting laptop I was able to get my hands on. It was a close call between the Zephyrus G14 and the Omen Transcend 14. The reason I went with the Omen Transcend 14 as my favorite is because it has never been seen before. They've never made a 14 inch Omen. So this was a really big deal. The MSI Prestige 16 AI OLED is one of those laptops again with Intel Core Ultra, just like the HP Omen. So for 3D modeling, I've yet to test it. So I am not saying this has my full endorsement. I would wait personally till I review the laptop so I can show you the benchmarks and see if it will be a good pick. However, it does come with an RTX 4060 to a 4070. So theoretically, if Intel Core Ultra gives us a great performance in 3D modeling softwares, we will see fantastic results, but it's yet to be tested. The reason I can recommend the i9-14900HX is because the i9-13900H or the HX showed great performance, and it's just a newer version of that processor. These are brand new processors that we've yet to test inside of 3D modeling programs, so we should be cautious about them until they are proven. Links are in the description below if you're ready to make a purchase, and of course, if you want to get the full 3D modeling benchmarks for any of the laptops, definitely the ones I have on my desk, but some of the ones that you've seen in the video as well, head on over to my channel, find the video, watch it, get your final decision made, and snag that laptop for 3D modeling. I'll see you here in the next video.